Hi, Dr. Golani. So sharing with you another patient of ours uh, today on keratoconus. And um, again, like all our patients, a number of things for you to learn, especially for the eye surgeons and optometrists about how to approach keratoconus. Just cross-linking them and putting them in hard contacts or contact lenses is not the answer. Just delaying their transplant is not the answer. In fact, doing a transplant is wrong. You want them to see. So please believe in the fact that they can see 2020. Today I have with me one of my, uh, again, amazing patients and uh, post uh, Jim. Uh, Jim, uh, if you don't mind, I'll just sure. improv through the history. Uh, Jim, uh, you may have seen before on one of his posts that he has done. He has um, extreme keratoconus. He has thin cornea, very high keratometry, extremely high irregular stigmatism of keratoconus up to six to seven diopters with posterior stigmatism too. He also has albinism. He also has amblyopia. And he has on top of all that, nystagmus. So if you can take a look at Jim's eyes, Jim, if you can just look for a minute, you can see the movements. And unfortunately, his surgeons perform a transplant on his left eye, which I never like in keratoconus patients. Again, no one did anything wrong, but the fact that they didn't believe that he could see. So how do we take this case and what did we do? So in the left eye, which was his first eye I wanted to approach because I always like to call this salvage the worst eye and then work on the pressure side. So his transplant eye, after I evaluated him, I came up with a concept in my think outside the cone of how I need to correct him. So what we did here is, we first corrected his eye by correcting his extreme myopia. By the way, he's also very highly myopic, a minus 13 by evaluation of cyclopegia. So I went into his eye and he had an early lens change. So we did a lens exchange, now understand this. He wasn't highly myopic because of his axial length, but more because of his keratometry and anterior chamber. So safety, though we got a retinal eval on him prior to that. And he's uh, beyond 50, so for all those reasons. Doing a lens exchange surgery, we fixed his high myopia, actually a toric lens implant and astigmatism. And about three months later, came back on his transplant to do a corneoplastic surgery, laser corneoplastic without cutting or chopping brought down his keratometry, regularized his cornea, and brought it straight to emetropia. Despite his amblyopia of 2080 in the left eye, right away today, he's at 2050 uncorrected. How does that feel, Jim? Awesome. Fantastic, actually, so. Great. And if you can just look at the camera, because I love to show my patients and show the impromptu reactions yeah. of how intelligent all patients are and how demanding they are, and yet I'm not giving up and the plan, and it works. So Jim, if you can want to say yeah. a few words. Actually, in my, my keratoconus in my left eye got so bad over the years, I could no longer even wear a contact lens on the eye because it would scrub, the keratoconus scrub the contact lens. And so, you know, I just had to, after the, the transplant, I had to put up with very poor vision, you know, due to that. And felt, and even, I went for LASIK surgery several times requesting over the years and doctors said, no, no, no. You know, because it's too thin, your cornea is thin. So it was great to get a doctor that says, yes, let's go and make it work. So very happy and keep, keep, uh, sight keeps getting better every week, so. Lovely. Now also remember my concept of, I don't believe in amblyopia until you fought all the way. And in his case, again, we did a stage surgery, lens-based, followed by laser corneoplasty. And you can see him, was there any pain in laser surgery? That's another no, that important great. thing. Yeah. Remember guys, we'll keep talking about surface laser surgery and pain, never seen it. Again, Jim, anything about pain you want to tell them? No, that was great. I mean, I knew what to expect. Uh, there was The surgery was absolutely fantastic, no pain at all. And I was worried over the next few days that it would be sore, but a little itchy, like you would, like you would expect, but real no pain at all. And you know, in three days, I really couldn't even tell I had surgery other than my vision was better. Lovely, and he's talking about surface laser surgery like PRK, so again, I've never seen pain. Our patients are asking them, very demanding, high IQ patients, yeah. I've never complained of pain. And don't forget, in addition, he had a transplant, and I did this surgery with my instrument that I've designed for LASIK, which uh, in his diagnosis, so we held his eyes steady during the laser, uh, in the few seconds that he yeah. had the laser, right? Yeah. Remember? 26 seconds. Yes, <laughs> 26 seconds. <laughs> <you can. laughs> yes. And then his right eye, which is his precious eye, we went into the eye, again planning the same concept, and toric lens implant, lens exchange surgery, straight to vision, and that's the important point here, bringing these patients to 2020 without doing invasive surgeries and the surgery that they need anyways. So now, Jim, as for a summary for doctors concerned, you'll never have a cataract, ever. You're done. We did the lens exchange with full safety, retina eval, and the axial length being normal, case being extremely high. 
right has still has a cone but he's stable if he at any point becomes unstable i'm going to track the vision with cross linking but cross linking not required if it's not required so that's where he is right eye perfect left eye we did a stage surgery over his transplant brought him to perfect vision beyond his amblyopia and today both eyes are nearly equal that's the other best part so jim how does that feel having your both eyes work together yeah i love the best thing is being able to wake up in the middle of the night and see for the first time in 50 years and the funny thing is i still go to bed and feel like i need to take my lenses out you know because after to be free of those after i've been wearing lenses since i was 13 you know and i'm i'm 60 next year next month so uh, it'll be a phenomenal feeling to be free of that so Jim, again, a pleasure. Thank you again for sharing. As I always do impromptu with all of you to keep inspiring my colleagues. For colleagues who want to see, um, again, this is important. If in case you want to see, this is his transplant eye, extremely high case of 70 and the refractive astigmatism irregular of about nine diopters. Then if you want to see his topography, extremely irregular as you see here. But again, these things are not as important. I'm showing this to you just because you guys like to see this, but to me, none of this is as important as getting the patient to the vision. And then looking at this person, you can see Jim. There we go. Thanks. Love it. Love the Tesla hat. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs>